We're learning about hypoxemia, and generally speaking, you can become hypoxemic for one of two reasons. Either oxygen is not getting to the alveoli, or oxygen is getting to the alveoli, but it's not getting from the alveoli into the blood. And we can tease apart these two causes by using the alveolar arterial oxygen gradient, or the AA gradient, which is the difference between the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolus and the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood. Now we want oxygen to have no trouble getting from the alveolus into the blood. So in a perfect world, these would be equal or at least very close. And if they're not, if the AA gradient is elevated, that means we have a problem of this latter sort, that oxygen is having trouble getting from the alveolus into the blood. So practically speaking, how do we calculate the AA gradient? How do we figure out what these are? Well, we know how to calculate alveolar oxygen using the equation we just discussed. And arterial oxygen, we can just measure from an ABG. Now, in reality, in healthy people, the AA gradient is never zero because there's always a small amount of normal right-to-left anatomic shunt, as well as some mismatches in ventilation and perfusion. For example, although both ventilation and perfusion are higher at the lung base than at the lung apex in an individual while standing, the ratio of ventilation to perfusion is lower at the base than at the apex. And if you're confused about these concepts of shunt and VQ mismatch, we're going to talk a lot more about them soon. So the AA gradient is always over zero. And actually, the normal AA gradient increases with age. And it can be approximated with this equation. So this tells you the normal AA gradient. And if the AA gradient is greater than this amount, then we say there's a problem. So what causes of hypoxemia lead to this increased AA gradient? VQ mismatch problems with gas diffusion in the lung, as you can see with interstitial lung disease, and right to left shunts. And although all of these are causes of hypoxemia, impaired gas diffusion usually only contributes to hypoxemia during exercise and not at rest. So what are examples of hypoxemia that don't increase the AA gradient? Well, as we said, these are cases where there's not enough oxygen getting to the alveoli. And some examples of that are hypoventilation, when you're not breathing enough, or a low inspired partial pressure of oxygen, when the gas you're breathing doesn't have enough oxygen in it. And that can happen at altitude. So calculating the AA gradient can help us distinguish between these causes of hypoxemia, because it's increased in these and not affected by these.